Alright guys, so uh, today I'm going to rank the greatest point guards of all time and I'm going to do this um, kind of live in a way that you guys can see how I'm ranking them. So I have 40 point guards here and I'm going to place them in different categories. Um, I have a top 10 point, like this is all just for point guards, right? I'm going to do these each by different positions. So this is top 1 to 10, top 10 to 20, 20 to 30, and then th below top 30 or 30 to 40, however you want to think about it. Uh, but this is just going to be for point guards ranking, and I'm going to go over every position. Right, so a bunch of guys here on the right, and I'm going to sort them according to where I think they rank. And uh, yeah, should be interesting, and um, tell you guys what I think, why I'm ranking them like that, okay? Alright, so let's see, I'm going to pick a point guard from here. These are all-time point guards, right, so from the 1950s all the way to 2020 now. Alright, so I'm going to pick a guy here, okay, Tiny Archibald. Okay, so this is Tony Archibald, um, led the league in assists, led the league in scoring before as well. Pretty good point guard. Probably probably the second best point guard of the uh, 1970s, actually, after Walt Frazier. So I would probably put him in the top 10 to 20, right? Because he was probably second best point guard of the 1970s, so that's got to be worth something, right? So pretty good player, um, putting him there. Uh, which means that I'm not going to say specific ranking, just that he's somewhere between 10 and 20. Um, so this guy, Tim Hardaway. Uh, where does Tim Hardaway go? Interesting. Um, probably one of the better point guards of the 1990s. I wouldn't say that he's the top two point guard of the 90s. It'll be, uh, top two would be Stockton, Peyton. Hardaway belongs in there, but um, yeah, I'm not... Not in the top two point guards, but he's probably somewhere in the top five point guards of the 90s. Yeah, so I would probably put him in the 20 to 30 category because he was a very good point guard. Um, I think he averaged something like eight assists a game, which is very good. Um, had a killer crossover. Yeah, definitely one of the best point guards of the 90s, but wasn't like the top top, right? So I would put him in the top 20, 30. All right, next, um, okay, Dave Bing. Where does Dave Bingo? I think, uh, so he's also kind of a 1970s point guard, led the league in scoring before. I think he comes right after Tiny Archibald, probably. It's Tiny Archibald, um, probably, like I said, top two point guard of the 70s. Dave Bing, probably a better scorer, but not as good of a passer as Tiny was. But he would probably be right up there. So I'd say after Tiny would probably be Bing for the 1970s. So I'm going to put him right after Tiny, and he's still going to be top 10 to 20, I think. He averaged like 20 points a game. It's pretty good. Led the league in scoring before, so um, he's, that's where he goes. And who else? I got Norm Van Leer. Norm Van Leer is, yeah, he was mostly part of the '70s, right? Um, he was probably the second best player on the Chicago Bulls teams uh, in the 1970s. But those 1970s Bulls teams, um, I mean, they were good uh, with Bob Love. Jerry Sloan um, and Van Leer, but you know they never actually made any finals, and the, he's not as dominant as Tiny was, or Walt Frazier, or Dave Bing was in nineteen seventy. So he's kind of like um, maybe he's still top five, and he's a really good defender as well. So I would say his strength is in his defense, but as an offensive player, uh, he wasn't that great. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to put him below top thirty here. Uh, so Norm Van Leer. It's going to go there. Um, definitely one of the better point guards of the 70s, but uh, probably like barely top five, though. He's mostly a defender, like a defensive player, I would say. So that's where he goes. And then uh, Walt Frazier, the best point guard in the 1970s. Um, yeah, he was, uh, when you're the best in your decade, you got to go somewhere high, right? Um, 1970, especially Walt Frazier is a two-way player, so he's got the offense and he's got the defense. Um, one of the best defenders at his position. So I'm going to put him top 10, actually. I have Walt Frazier top 10. So I'm going to put him top 10. That's where Clyde goes. All right, next up we have John Stockton. And John Stockton has to be top 10 because he's the all-time leader in assists and all-time leader in steals. So he has to be top 10 as well. Pretty much no-brainer. Um, next up we got Chauncey Billups. Uh, I think Chauncey Billups is kind of underrated. He was a really good player as well. Uh, one of the top point guards of the 2000s. Although I wouldn't consider him 2000 as well. You got Nash, you got Kidd, um, so he's not top two. Um, probably top five in the 2000s, but he has a finals MVP. He's also a good defender. I would probably put him top 10 to 20. 
because I put Phillips there. I think Phillips is good, but he's not at that top 10 level. But he is kind of in the top 10, 20 range, I think. All right, um, next up we got uh, Louis Dampier. So Louis Dampier played most of his career in the ABA. He's the all-time ABA uh, leading scorer. Um, where would I put Louis Dampier? Um, probably, it's interesting. There's not like too much footage of him because he was in the ABA, but he was a very good scorer, obviously, because he's an all-time leading ABA scorer and a uh, pretty decent assister as well. Probably I'm going to put him, so in top 30, yep, I'm probably going to put him top 20 to 30, actually, because, um, I mean, leading an entire league in a, in a category has got to be worth something. All right, Magic Johnson, I mean, this should be a no-brainer, top 1 to 10, because he's, he's the best point guard ever, <laughs> right? Five rings, three MVPs, three finals MVPs, no-brainer. All right, Lenny Wilkins, where does Lenny Wilkins go? Um, Nine-time All-Star, very, very good in his prime because he led Seattle. Um, didn't really lead him to the finals, but he was a very good player as well. Um, pretty decent passer. I think he's a uh, top 15 assist or something like that. So he played in the 60s. Um, probably Oscar Robertson is the best point guard, but after Oscar Robertson, it might be Lenny Wilkins right in the 60s uh, if you don't count Jerry West as a point guard. So it's interesting. Um, I think I would actually put him 20 to 30, though, because the thing is, Lenny Wilkins is very good, but um, but I wouldn't say he's like totally really, really dominant or anything like that. And his teams, uh, the Sonics never run to the finals or anything. So yeah, that's where I would put him, 20 to 30. Kevin Johnson. Uh, Kevin Johnson had a very, very good prime. Um, might be arguably even the best point guard in the league in his prime. Might be better than Mark Price, John Stockton, Gary Payton. So that's got to be worth something. Um, so I actually like Kevin Johnson a lot. I think he actually might be top 10 to 20. Because before his injury, he was very, very good. And he averaged like 9 assists a game, um, which is one of the highest all time. He was ridiculously good in his prime. So, uh, and he, yeah, I, even though his total career isn't as great, I guess, but is just on the strength of his prime, he's really good. Okay, Rajon Rondo, um, so he won his second ring now with the Lakers. Uh, very good passer, uh, pretty decent defender as well, but can't really shoot. So his offense, offensive game isn't really that great. Um, but just a player that you you just like to have on your team, plus in the playoffs, he, he goes up to a different level. So I'm going to put him top 20 to 30. I think he's a very, very solid player um, that you can have on your team, not as the first or second best player, but as uh, maybe third or fourth option, he's pretty good. All right, uh, Maurice Cheeks. Um, I'm going to put Maurice Cheeks in below top 30, even though I know he's like one of the top assisters. He's a good defensive player, um, but I can't say that he's not like a really good offensive player or anything. He's not a good scorer, and his his assist is mostly because he played a very long time, but it's not because he... Uh, his assist average is very high and thing. I think it's like below seven a game. So anyways, good player, but um, definitely someone probably almost similar to Rondo. But Rondo, I would probably take a little bit over Cheeks because he actually, I think Rondo is a slightly better passer than Cheeks is. So I have Rondo 2030, I'll have Cheeks here. All right, uh, Tony Parker. Um, Tony Parker, I think is actually a little bit underrated. Um, he's very good. In his prime, people forget like Parker actually was the best player on his team uh, in the 2007 Finals when he beat out Tim Duncan for Finals MVP. And a uh, very, very fast player. Um, I wouldn't say he's the best passer, but he can definitely get you a lot of points because he drives really, really good because he's so fast. Um, you can penetrate very well. I'll put him in the 10 to 20 range. I think Tony Parker is pretty good. All right, uh, Mark Price. Where did I put Mark Price? Um, Mark Price was very good in his day, um, but he's not like up to that level. He's not like Kevin Johnson or even um, maybe not even Tim Hardaway level. But he was good in his prime for like a few years. And then he just, uh, yeah, he's a very solid point guard. He's a very good shooter too. A very good shooter, uh, solid point guard. But I wouldn't say he's not like a, he's not like a superstar or anything. So um, see, the Cavs did have some success, but it's not like because of Jordan, they, didn't, they never really made it passed. Uh, they never really made it that deep in the playoffs. Um, 
had a pretty good team, like team dynamic with Brad Dottery. Um, I don't know. I can't put him as high as Kevin Johnson or Tim Hardaway though, because I felt like he wasn't that dominant out of a level. He was a better shooter than those guys, but he's not on that dominant level, right? So I'm just putting him below top 30. So Mark Price goes down here. Good shooter, uh, solid point guard, but not up to those, that level. Bob Cousy. Uh, Bob Cousy has to be top 10, I think, for me, um, because he was the top, not only the top point guard of the 50s, but he was arguably one, arguably like one of the best players, right? You had George Mikan, um, we're counting white players, so not like not going to include Bill Russell, but George Mikan, Bob Pettit, and Bob Cousy. Probably those three are the top three white players of the 50s, right? So if you're top three, um, in the 50s, you know, like <laughs> a lot of white players, if you're top three, then that's got to count for something. Plus one MVP, six rings, eight assist titles, that's got to count for something. I'm going to put him in the top 10. Bob Cousy, very influential, set the standard for modern point guards. Steph Curry, um, yeah, he's top 10. I mean, He's probably the top point guard of his generation, uh, the greatest shooter ever. Uh, I wouldn't say he's as good of a passer as some of these other guys. Like These guys are probably better passers. Curry isn't really uh, known for his passing as much as he is his shooting. Um, so, you no know, solid shooter and solid leader. Um, so, yeah, three rings, two MVPs. Yeah, um, just tremendous on the three-point shot. Yeah, I got to put him in the top ten. Darren Williams, um, very short but great prime. In his prime, he was actually comparable to Chris Paul, but he was very short. It was about like three years. So for that reason, I can't rank him very high. He's kind of like a Kevin Johnson, but I wouldn't say he's as good as Kevin Johnson. So I'm going to put Darren Williams below top 30 here because he was good in his prime, but just his overall career wasn't as good. All right, um, Dennis Johnson. So Dennis Johnson, great defender, um, also Finals MVP as well on the Sonics, and also a very solid player on the Celtics as well. Um, so yeah, just for his defense, uh, I guess you can say that. Let's see, Norm Van Leer also got a defense, but Dennis Johnson had the offensive game that Van Leer did not have. So, and he's also a very clutch player as well. So I'm going to put Dennis Johnson in top 10 or 20. I think he's a solid player. Um, actually was the best player for his team at one point in Seattle. So that's got to count for something. All right, um, Gus Williams. So that's the thing. Gus Williams played with Dennis Johnson um, also as a point guard. The reason why they're both on here, by the way, is because Dennis Johnson was actually a shooting guard while he was with the Sonics. But he was a point guard with the Celtics, which is why they're both point guards on here. But he actually played on the same team with Gus Williams. Um, and they're both point guards, but DJ is actually more of a, a combo guard. But I put him as a point guard here because he was point guard with the Celtics. Um, but um, yeah, with well, Gus Williams here, I'm going to have to put Gus Williams down here because he's a very solid, um, very solid third option or fourth option. Again, just like Rondo, but um, not really like a superstar level kind of guy. Uh, didn't like really dominate like that, but he's just a good solid player, right? Um, good defender, good solid player, not like a super superstar level guy, not probably not your first or second option. He wasn't the first or second option on his team either, right? That was Dennis Johnson and Jack Sigma. So yeah, I'm gonna put him down here. Jimmy Jones uh, played in the ABA. Uh, probably, I want to say the second best player on the 1971 championship. Utah team that won the uh, ABA Finals. So the Utah Stars actually won, you know, the championship that year. He's probably the second best player on there after Willie Wise. So, hmm. actually, no, I think I might be mistaken. He he wasn't on that championship Utah team. That was Zelmo Beatty and Willie Wise. But he was on the uh, following season, right? He was on the Utah team the following season. Uh, but still, a very good player. Um, all around, average like sixteen five and five or something like that in like a five-time All-Star, okay. Uh, yeah, I would put him probably top 20, 30, because he's a solid player, um, was able to be the second best player on his team, but couldn't really uh, lead them to a championship or anything, and not superstar level, so that's where I'm gonna put him. All right, so now I've got Larry Jones, also played in the ABA as well, uh, very good in the early years of the ABA. Um, yeah, where should I put him? Probably below Jimmy Jones, right? 
because uh, Jimmy Jones was good. I don't think Larry Jones was quite as good as Jimmy Jones. Maybe they, or Louis Dampier, because he actually, you know, you can have a all-time statistical record like that. Um, and it's, I don't think his prime years, his prime years were kind of short. So I'm going to put Larry Jones down here. Yeah, very good player. Uh, but I wouldn't say he's as dominant as uh, some of these guys, and yeah, not sure about the team success either. All right, Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry, second best player on the 2019 Championship Raptors. Arguably the best player in Toronto history. One of the best players in Raptors history anyways. Um, and better in the playoffs than the regular season. That has to count for something. So, um, yeah, again, solid player, not like a first option or anything like that. Definitely can be a second option, though. Uh, Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving, again, just like Kyle Lowry, I feel like he's a good second option or third option, but not really a first option, right? Uh, so he's not up to that level. Um, and then one ring with LeBron, obviously. And very good ball handler. Some, some call Kyrie the best ball handler ever. Uh, very good ball handler and um, you yeah, know solid player. Um, just you can't have him as your first option. I'm gonna put him 20 to 30 as well. Very similar to Kyle Lowry. Steve Nash. <sighs> I actually don't think I have Steve Nash in my top 10. Uh, the reason is because okay, he won two MVPs, um, and he's a really good shooter. He's also very good at passer, but he never made it to the finals, and he's not a good defender. So in the top 10, I think you got to be at least somewhat of a two-way player. Except for Magic, he's like an exception. But the rest are, you got to be like somewhat of a two-way player. Curry, okay, Curry's not a good defender either. Or Kuzi. But these guys, because of the championships, right? And Nash doesn't have any championships. So you got you either got to have championships, or you got to be a good two-way player. Don't think Nash is, Nash doesn't have rings, and he's not a good two-way player. So, yeah. Unfortunately, going to have to put him top 10, 20, but he's very close to the top 10. Isaiah Thomas, I think Isaiah Thomas has to be in top 10, right? Because, um, I mean, he's a leader of the Bad Boy Pistons, two rings, uh, nine assists a game, which is one of the highest all time. Uh, very, very tough. Finals MVP, um, clutch player. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I got to put Isaiah up here as well, right? That's got to be worth something. Very good leader as well. So, yeah, Isaiah, I think, is top 10. JoJo White. Where does JoJo White go? Um, is he a top 10 to 20 player? I'm trying to decide if he's actually better than... So the thing is, I already said, uh, Frazier, Tiny Archibald, and Dave Bing were the three top point guards of the 70s. JoJo White is not... Uh, so he's not top three, but he might be right after them. So I think right after uh, Frazier and Tiny and Bing, it's probably JoJo White. Um, but wasn't really good shooter... Uh, defender defense is just mediocre. Um, third best player on those '70s championship Celtics, so I'm gonna put him top 20 to 30. Actually, yeah, I think he's a little bit of a level below those guys. All right next up, I got Damian Lillard. I think Damian Lillard uh, has definitely gone up in the rankings in the recent years because uh, he showed basically that he's a pretty much an alpha dog, just as much of an alpha dog as uh, any of these guys. And um, solid player, like very clutch, and um, Sony can run up for either score or assist. So I think Dame has got to be up here uh, because he can actually be an alpha dog. With Irving, there was a debate actually between Kyrie and Dame at one point as to who was the better point guard. But now I think there's no debate anymore. Dame is better. He's proved that he's actually an alpha dog, and Kyrie really is not. So I'm going to put Dame in the top 10 to 20. Yeah, so I got maybe two more here. Um, Bob Davies. Bob Davies was probably the first superstar point guard ever, like before Bob Cousy even. Because um, Bob Cousy was the better point guard of the 50s, obviously. But Bob Davies led the Rochester Royals to a ring and was probably the best point guard before Cousy. How much is that worth? Probably not very much because the early 50s was very uncompetitive. uncompetitive. Um, really, you know, that's just the beginning of the NBA. But, you know, winning a title 
as the best point guard of your era, however short that era is, um, has to be worth something. Anyways, I'm probably put him here because you know there's no way that <laughs> he can match up to any of these guys. Um, just you know, just for his early accomplishments, he has to go there. All right. Next up, we got Chris Paul. Um, I think Chris Paul has to be a top 10 point guard, even though he doesn't have any rings, but he's one of the best players to never win a ring, right? Uh, he does everything a point guard should do. Uh, he can score, he can shoot, he can pass, he can defend. Uh, really, the only problem is um, is he's been a little bit unlucky. <laughs> so that's pretty much in his injuries and stuff. He's just been a little bit unlucky, but he's got all the attributes that you want in a point guard. Um, just doesn't have a ring because he's been a little bit unlucky. So I'm going to put him top 10. I think Chris Paul is top 10. All right. Uh, next up. So we got um, Steve Francis. Steve Francis is a good point guard. And one of the things about Steve Francis, I think is a little bit underrated, is that uh, he's a kind of like a triple-double threat uh, because I think he averaged something like 15, 6, and 6 in his career, which is quite impressive. Uh, so he can actually do a little bit of everything. Like, think about Clyde Drexler, right? And Clyde Drexler, obviously a better player than Steve Francis, but Drexler averaged like 26 and 6. Steve Francis is kind of like very close to Drexler in stats in terms of the uh, rebounding and passing. So he's averaging like 15, 6, and 6. So basically, like Drexler, he can rebound and pass well, but um, just can't score as well. And he's more of like a third option kind of guy. Not really a superstar like Drexler was. Doesn't have the alpha dog. Yep. Um, solid player, right? Just a, kind of more like a third option kind of guy. Okay. I'm put Francis right here below top 30. Right. Next up, we got John Wall. John Wall, I think, has to, has to be down here because even though he's really good at passing, he actually averages over nine assists a game, which is really good. And he's also a good scorer as well. Uh, just he's, he hasn't really seen any team success. Uh, doesn't really have any All NBA selections, so that hurts him. Um, probably a solid player, probably the best player on his team, the Wizards team. It's just uh, hasn't really seen much success in the playoffs. All right, Penny Hardaway. So Penny Hardaway, I think, also has to go down here as well. Um, it's just because he was really, really good in his prime, but because his prime was a little bit short, and then he got injured, um, he's probably as good as any point guard up here in his prime but just uh because his prime was so short and he got injured so yeah he, he didn't really see that much success after that so yeah uh, i had to put penny down here even though he's a really good player in his prime just his overall career isn't up there oscar robertson has to be top 10 i think uh he's clearly the best point guard of his era um the set the standard for the big point guards could do everything score uh, pass and rebound. Um, stats were pretty ridiculous. Average triple double. Um, actually, first five seasons averaged a triple double. Very impressive, right? They won an MVP back when centers dominated the game. So it has to be top ten. All right, and then we got Gary Payton. So Gary Payton is. Um, I'm gonna have to put him top ten to twenty, because Gary Payton is a really good defender. Uh, scoring was okay. He wasn't as good at scoring as some of these other guys, but he was okay at it. Uh, just his defense is his main thing, and that's got to count for something. But I don't know. I'm not. Sh I think he's he's missing a little bit of something that puts him in the top ten, right? Like the Wall Frazier, at least you can. He's very clutch, uh, and he's had better offense than Peyton, right? So Peyton, you can think of it as he's Wall Frazier, but slightly lacking in offense compared to Frazier. Um, and, uh, you know, doesn't have the two rings in, uh, well, actually Gary Payton, I think, does have a ring, but it wasn't in his prime, right? Whereas Fraser won two rings in his prime, so that's worth something. So I'm going to put Payton top 10, 20. Oh, who's left? Uh, okay, we've got Mac Calvin. So Mac Calvin, uh, ABA star, um, I haven't watched too much of footage of him, but from what I've seen, uh, what people have told me online, from um, the old people who watched him play. Uh, he was very, very good in his prime. <sighs> Probably on the level of Louis Dampier or Jimmy Jones, maybe even better than them. So I'm going to put Matt Calvin there. Don't know too much about him, but uh, I think I'm just going to take the old guy's word for it and say that, okay, he's probably just as good as these guys. 
Okay, um, the other ones are kind of interesting. Luka Doncic. Luka Doncic, I might actually put into the top 10 to 20. And I know this seems a little bit premature, but Luka Doncic has shown that he's going to become one of the best point guards of all time already. It's only his second year, and he's already averaging like almost a triple-double in the finals, a 30-point triple-double in the finals, and he's just going to get better from here, right? He kind of reminds me of um, a cross between Magic and Bird, which is uh, saying a lot. So I th actually think that Luka is going to... Yeah, he's definitely going to be 10 to 20, I think. Just a fantastic, talented player that uh, only in his second year and already doing so well. So I think he has to be up there. Derek Rose, I'm going to put top 20 to 30 because just like Penny, he was really good in his prime, but his overall career, I can't say is anywhere near these guys, right? <laughs> I mean, in his prime, he won an MVP, so that's worth something. Um, so that's why I put him on 20 to 30, but when you compare the overall careers, it's not up to these guys. But yeah, very, very good in his prime. Uh, Jason Kidd has to be top 10, right? Um, the leader of his team, uh, two finals teams, actually. Uh, and his second best player was what, like Richard Jefferson or something? So, got to give Jason Kidd credit for that. Uh, Triple-double machine. Not a very good shooter, but a, but a pretty good defender as well. So, not a good shooter, but uh, did everything else a point guard should do. Rebound, passes very well. Um, top five all-time in assists. And a uh, very good defender. So, unlike Steve Nash, so that's why I put Steve Nash down here. Kidd, I can actually defend. So... The defense kind of um, pushes Kid to the top for me. And also the fact that he has a ring, right? Even though it's past his prime, but at least he, he has a ring too. So, got to be worth something. All right, and Russell Westbrook, I'm going to put in the top 10 to round it out. Um, I know West, Russell Westbrook gets a lot of flack. Um, and probably he's on the fringe top 10, I would say. Westbrook and Nash, probably on the fringe top 10. It's hard to know which one's better for me, but... Westbrook won an MVP, uh, triple-double machine, um, not a good shooter, but very good at driving, very good at getting to the line, and um, ferocious player, um, yeah, scoring, he led the league in, in scoring before, led the league in passing before, averaged triple-double three times, which is something that we've only seen Ross Robertson do before. So that's all got to be worth something, right? Cause people say that Russell Westbrook stat pads, but you know, in other any other player in NBA history can also stat pad, but they didn't get a triple double, right? So Russell Westbrook is the only one other than Oscar Robertson to get a triple double, and it was like a thirty point triple double, right? So it's got to be worth something. So, um, anyways, I know his teams haven't seen much success, and he's kind of considered like a toxic team player, but just in terms of the stats, I guess stats have to be worth something. Then Westbrook is top 10, but just fringe top 10, okay? So anyways, that is my greatest point guards of all time and how I uh, ranked them here. And um, yeah, hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. And yeah, uh, please look forward to my next videos. I'm going to rank the other positions as well. But this is my ranking for the uh, top, I guess, 40 point guards of all time and where I rank them. So uh, thanks for watching. All right, so I'm going to make a few changes to my all-time point guards list. So on this list, um, the thing about point guards in NBA history is that this position, when I'm doing my research, I notice that this position is actually quite stacked, uh, especially compared to shooting guards. So shooting guards are probably the weakest position in NBA history, and point guards are probably the most stacked position. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some of the combo guards out. I know there's some combo guards like Jerry West, um, Charlie Scott, and Dennis Johnson, who can play both positions equally well, and, uh, and actually Paul Westphal as well. So I already moved Paul Westphal, Charlie Scott over to my SG list, and Jerry West as well. Um, I haven't moved over Dennis Johnson yet. So uh, DJ, actually, mostly known as a point guard because he mostly played as a PG with the Celtics, but he was actually a shooting guard during his early years with the Sonics, right? When he won finals MVP as the best player on the Sonics, he was actually a point guard. So I'm going to move him to the point guard list. So um, sorry, DJ. I mean, he's still going to be top 10 to 20 on the point on the uh, shooting guards list. But I'm going to move him to the shooting guards list now, not the point guard list. Reason is because there's so many good point guards in NBA history. So um, I want to make this list a little bit more comprehensive. And then I want to shore up my SG's list a bit because my SG list is looking a little bit weak. 
not that many good SGs in NBA history. So I'm going to move DJ over to the SG list. And then I'm going to move up JoJo White. I think JoJo White's going to move up to the top 10, 20 position, probably in the number 20 spot, number 19 spot, around there. And then I'm going to move up Maurice Cheeks over to the top 20 to 30 spot. Okay, Because uh, Maurice Cheeks was probably fringe top 30 player. Uh, top 30 point guard player, I want to say. <laughs> Definitely not top 30 player, top, top 30 PG, right? Um, but yeah, Maurice Cheeks definitely deserves to be. I mean, like, yeah, five-time All-Defensive, especially in the kind of, in an era in the 80s where there was a lot of great defensive um, point guards and, and shooting guards, you know, Dennis Johnson included, right? Uh, the fact that Maurice Cheeks got so many All-Defensive first teams, is an, that's a testament to how tough he was. So I think Maurice Cheeks definitely fringe top 30, and in Maurice Cheeks' place, I'm going to put in Terry Porter, who I think is one of the most underrated PGs of his era. There was a lot of great PGs in the late 80s to early 90s. A lot of people that people forget about Terry Porter, Mark Price, who's right here, um, KJ, Tim Hardaway. Um, all these guys are kind of like forgotten because it was, it was basically like people just knew about Gary Payton, John Stockton, right? Um, maybe Isaiah Thomas, right? So people know about these, these guys, but... Um, some of these other guys, these third-tier point guards kind of get forgotten. Well, Kevin Johnson actually in his prime was a second-tier point guard. But these third-tier point guards like uh, Hardaway, Mark Price, Terry Porter, they kind of get lost in the shuffle. Uh, but Terry Porter is second-best player for those Blazers teams that went to the finals um, in 90 and 92. Obviously, the best player was Clyde Drexler. But Terry Porter, uh, a good number two for those years. And in his prime, he was actually pretty good too. So I'm going to put Terry Porter here in the top 40. So I think he belongs somewhere in the 30 to 40 range, but I do want to add him to my top PG list because I think he definitely deserves to be in there. Um, and yeah, that's it. Just move out DJ, move up JoJo White, move up Maurice Sheiks, and then add Terry Porter in. So um, that's it. That's my greatest point guards list, my top 40.